guys, back with another portable clan. Here's the deal, guys. I'm not a real actor. I've been I've been trying to pretend to be a real actor for the past 33 years, and that's the truth. I'm not even trying to be funny. This guy's a real actor. He really acts and he really goes for it. That's why I wanted him on the show because I'm always impressed with his body of work. Ladies and gentlemen, Darren Cooper. Look at this guy. Hey Look at this How guy right you? here. How are you, man? Excellent. How are All you? right, good deal. Okay. As I was telling Darren earlier, we're at the Farmer's Market in Los Angeles, California. It's around 9.45ish, something like that. It could even be 10 o'clock, I don't even know. But the bar is happening right now, so please excuse the noise. People like to drink early on Fridays. Yeah, why not, you know? Why not? You know, it's Friday, it's, it's LA. 5 o'clock somewhere. Hey, there you go. Okay, Darren Cooper. Yes, sir. Let's talk about you. All right. You ready? No. Okay, yeah, you are. <laughs> Darren. Why, why an actor? Why did you want to be an actor? Oh wow, that's a that's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. Um, it was funny because I went to college to be a graphic designer, and I uh, came out here and worked in advertising for a short bit. I'm going to stop you right there, and I'm sorry. At, when you were five years old, ten years old, you didn't think about that at all, being an actor. All right, all right, you, you nailed me. Uh, yeah, no, I thought about it in. Uh, I, I mean, we all escaped in movies, right? Right, right, right. So I ended up, I mean, every Saturday, I lived in a small town in Kansas, so I would go to the, the movie theaters every Saturday night, and I would, from the age of five, I mean, I saw Jaws when I was like 10, you know, things sure. I should not have seen. Sure, yeah. But there was such, it, it was an escape for me, right? Right. Every movie, every Saturday was like, oh, a chance to get out of, of this life that I'm living right now. Was it right? a bad life? I mean, when you say it's a small town in Kansas, was it, was it I, again, I don't want to get personal, but was there stuff going on in your life that where you needed to escape or you just like to escape? Well, I, you know, I just kind of like to escape. Okay, okay, you know okay. I mean? All right, okay. Um, there's, I mean, there were some variables in there too. I mean, my father left when I was young and blah, 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 blah. So, okay. you know, and, okay. and I, okay. just, I think it was bored mostly. Okay. I was just bored, wanted, wanted to do something like what Indiana Jones was doing, you know? Sure, sure, yeah. So. That's what I did. I, I just escaped there, and then I went into. Uh, my mom's the one that actually taught me into doing theater. Why? I wouldn't do it. I was terrified. Why? Okay. I had a bad experience when I was in fourth grade. Well, kind of, well tell me about that. <laughs> it was a horrible experience. I was in fourth grade, and I, uh, my whole job was the narrator of the play. Okay, that seems like the easiest part of the play. Well, you would think, right? Right. But I don't remember trying to memorize my like what Clint's playing. Clint's playing Joe. Joe you know, Donner over there and, and Curtis over here is playing Jim. I never memorized all that. Okay, so, so I, wait, being the narrator, you, you can't just read off a piece of paper? You have to memorize it? Mm -mm. Oh, okay, then forget it. I don't want that part. Right, I don't want right. that part at all. I knew the setting and the setting, and I repeated it twice. Yeah. And then I froze. Okay. I saw all the moms and dads out there, and I went, and, and I just froze. Terrible. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> Stage fright in this, you yeah. know, it's, yeah. it's, it's beginnings. And oh my gosh, I am like, I'm never doing that again. Ever, never, never, never. Okay, okay. So, okay, we get all of that. So you wanted to escape and then you go to college, just like you were gonna say, go on, let's pick it up there. Yeah, um, then I got a degree in, I, my mom, everybody was kind of like supporting me in my, my art. Okay. I was, I, was a, I was an okay artist. So I got a degree in graphic design, which I actually wanted to be a comic book illustrator. But okay. my counselor, brilliant guy, you're not going to make any money at that. So why don't we go over to here into this thing called graphic design? I was 18. I'd never heard the term graphic design. Okay. You know, this is like 1984. Right, you know, right, what, right. What is that? Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? Wait, yeah. were you kind of mad that your counselor told you not to become a comic book? Yeah, a little bit. A little disappointed. You know? But yeah. I'm like, you know, here's the other thing about growing up in the middle of the of the country is like you're, you don't have these big city ideas kind of like supported under you. It's like that's a that's another world away. Right, right. So yes. you just go to school and get a job. Yes. I don't care what your job is. Just the second you get out, you get a job like day two, and you work the rest of your life. Right, Miss Mustard. I not to make this about me, but Miss Mustard. Boy. Yeah, Miss Mustard. Uh, in in uh, elementary school, asked us what we wanted to be when we grow up. I said actor. She goes, Clint, seriously, what do you want to be? Be realistic with this. And I'll never forget that. And that just always, I don't know. But that's why I've been trying for 32 years to, to impress her. Okay, go I, ahead. Go I ahead. feel your pain. Bro. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, 
uh, so I ended up going to school and you know, got this degree in graphic design. I moved out to LA thinking I'm really going to go there and be in a Hollywood movie star. Okay. I mean, that was my goal on the back side of it. Right, right. I'm like, that's my excuse to get out there. Okay, when you move out here, what year is it when you move out here? I got here June 21st, maybe? 21st, 26th, somewhere in there, June 26th of 1989. 1989. Yes, and did you roll into town by yourself? I rolled into town with a buddy of mine from uh, who graduated right next to me in graphic design and wanted to be <laughs> wanted to be an actor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was funny. Chris Davis. So thank you. I, we moved out here together and had a good time. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay. Um, I got kind of sidetracked mm -hmm. there. You, you moved out here with him. Look at this, look at this. We're having some technical difficulties just for a second. Look at that, we're gonna pick it right up. All right, good deal. Okay, let's pick it back up. Yeah. You move out here, you roll into town June 22nd, 1989. With this dude. With this dude. And where do you guys move to? I like to know where, I like to know where the apartment was, I like to know what street. I lived at 1400 Venice Boulevard in okay. Venice, California. Okay. About two blocks down from Venice High School. Sure. Yeah, uh, like Venice and Walgrove ish, I want to say. I think Walgrove was a cross street on one side, Penmar was a cross street on the other side. Okay. What's the first thing you do to start getting your career going? Okay, so, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm in Malibu at the time and a design firm on the beach, which you think would be phenomenal. Sure, sure. I'm there three weeks. I mean, I have my own cubicle, I have my own drawing board, my T square, my all my magic markers, all my different colors doing marker comps of like uh, uh, Toyota and Nissan and Mitsubishi dealership. You know, the, the mailers you get in the mail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were designing those. Show off? Yeah, well, one out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, go so ahead. So we're sitting there and it's, we're about three weeks in and, and I'm like, man, this is life, dude. Take me out, take me out. <laughs> I hear you, And man. he felt the same way. So we found this thing, it was a crazy magazine called Faces International. Do you remember Faces International? I do remember that, I totally remember that. This big, it was this huge scam, yep. right? Well, really? Oh, no, I mean, gigantic I, I, yeah, Now that you say that, okay, go ahead, go ahead. So they would hook you in, and we met this guy, I won't mention any names, but uh, Greg was his first name. Greg. <laughs> And he's like, oh, you guys, you know, okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sign you up for uh, commercial acting classes, and then we're going to move you from that to like a, uh, you know, a real acting class. And then, you know, you look like, man, you could play a detective. You know, I mean, he just, he hooked us, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, and by the way, we do this publication that comes out once a month, and like, I think Robert Wagner was on the cover of it with a, you know, and uh, we're like, oh, well, that's kind of cool. Do we get in that? He's like, yes, but you know, the cover is $2,400. <laughs> And, then, <laughs> and they probably gave it to Robert Wagner for well, free, right? Yeah, Just sure, to sure. sucker you guys Probably in. paid him, actually. Well, you know, yeah, exactly, out, right? exactly. So, you know, so we ended up doing this commercial class. And it was this fantastic character actor named John Miranda. Okay, is he still around? Do you still I don't know. know. He, okay. was, he was pretty old then. Um, and anyway, John Miranda, he, we had our first couple, two or three weeks, and he pulls us aside and whispers in our ear. He goes, you know what, you guys? You've got a lot of potential get out of this <laughs> I love them that's awesome <laughs> so we did we ended up doing some commercial plan, uh, workshops and who? With, who? with who Tepper Gallego sure sure I remember them um, and then there's another one called LA commercials LA Los Angeles I don't know okay okay but the agent and that's where I met uh, Chopper Marlon Young okay so oh that was yeah like 90 90 91 Chopper's somewhere. awesome dude I was so impressed love with Chopper guy. man love that guy Love you, Chopper. And, and, and anybody, like I said, anybody who has a cool nickname is Chopper. I mean, you know he's cool. <laughs> he's very cool. Okay, what's your first gig? What? How do you get an agent? Okay, so doing te uh, Tepper Gallegos. Okay. I remember smiling and slating at the end. Hi, I'm Darren Cooper. And the agents that were in there started laughing. They're like, "Wow, are those real teeth? What kind of a deal?" Like my my smile was so big and probably inauthentic that they're like, mm, "Not this guy." Um, and ended up doing another commercial class at LA commercials or whatever. And an agent came in. Her name was Carol Detana. Now, Carol Detana was phenomenal. She hooks me in and she goes, All right, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get you a, a, 
part on the soap opera first, and then she's, the first thing you do is join after. So pay your 800, 900 bucks, join after. We'll get you a line or two on um, on a soap opera, and then a year later you'll be able to join SAG. And that's that's the goal. Okay. So that's how it works. Um, and then uh, and the next thing you know, I mean, I stayed with her for a long time, and my first gig was not through her. I went out a lot of times. I was bald. It was hard to get jobs. Been a being a 23 year old bald guy. So you started off bald. Oh yeah, man. I lost my hair at 18. Okay. How are you, when you get out of here, is, is the baldness, is that getting in your way? Are you self-conscious about it? Self-conscious about it? Or are you like, I don't care. I'm bald. So what? Nah, I wish I was that way. Tell man, me about that. It takes a real man to, to like, you know, yeah. own up to your mask and your, your baldness. Sure. You sure. Know? Yeah, man. No, I was, I was 23 and I was, uh, I'm like, I, I, if I'm going to be a movie star, I have to have hair. Right. Right. So I went over and I met with Bosley. Now this was before Bosley perfected his uh, his transplant. It was when they did the cornrows, you know the. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, man, he got me in there. He's like, well, you know, initially it's only going to cost this much. I mean, I met Bosley himself. Really? This how was, long ago? Okay, okay. <laughs> this is 1990, All right. right? And not Tom Bosley. Not Tom. <laughs> not happy okay. days. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So then. Um, I, I was I, I couldn't I, I just couldn't get the money going you know what I mean I couldn't, sure, I couldn't sure. do the money thing I'm like ah maybe not and then I thought well what about William Shatner what about Burt Reynolds they, they wore hair pieces so I sure went, went down there to um one still does yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe the other one still does too <laughs> yeah you're right you're right <laughs> uh, so what was the place <laughs> called hair replacement for men no that, that wasn't it I don't remember what the place was but I bought I got I bought a multi thousand dollar wig and I mean. What was I making right then? I was making about fifteen dollars an hour, and uh, I, I just got—I just hooked myself so bad. I just started dumping stuff on credit cards, right? And uh, bought this really sweet piece, slapped it on, started doing the uh, AIA action and action, action, acting, action and yes, acting. Yes, yes, that's where you read in front of casting directors, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I started doing that. I, I hadn't trained. Keep in mind, I haven't done anything. Yet. Okay. And this this casting director who was a dialogue coach for Happy Days. Well, Tom Bosley. Tom Bosley. No, his name was um, Bobby Hoffman. Okay. Now, All Bobby right. Hoffman, this great New York guy from uh, Brooklyn, and he uh, he uh, said, "Okay, Darren, Darren." He liked me, right? in more ways than one. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm gonna make a call on your behalf. Okay, I'm gonna call. Uh, I'm gonna call. Uh, uh, whatever the guy's name was over at General Hospital at the time. Marvin? I think Marvin was the main casting director at that point. Puts a call in, and I go in. And I meet with the the, the associate, Michelle, I think was her name. And she goes, well, Bobby called on, on your behalf, Darren. I, I, he must, you know, you must be something, is what, he, what she said. Sure. And, which was totally BS, because I, I, I didn't know anything. I didn't okay. know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what size of a part would you like? This is a question. Of, okay, this is nice. This right? is really great questions, I, man. I am so not confident in my acting abilities right, right. that I was wise. At least I was wise. Thank you, God. I was wise to go. Uh, maybe just an under five would be nice. Okay. Next thing you know, I get on the thing. I do the thing. Um, the whole world misses it because my mom tells them I'm on Young and the Restless instead. So, <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually a good thing. <laughs> Oh man, I, you know, I had a copy on VHS for about 25 years. Yeah, yeah. VHS just kind of disintegrates. Sure, sure, sure. Well, the, <laughs> but not it that was one. so bad. Oh my gosh, it was so. <laughs> I, I just, you know, have you ever had one of those experiences when you're watching yourself and you're going, oh, oh, yeah, it just gets yeah. smaller and smaller. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah all the time. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Okay, Darren. Oh man. So you get an under five part. Yes. With a hairpiece. With the hairpiece. When do you ditch the hairpiece, or do you keep oh, it for a few years? Oh boy! All right. You know what? I'm kind of, I'm trying to work up to Vengeance Unlimited. You and I share that credit. I did an episode of Vengeance Unlimited. Did anybody watch those shows? I don't think so. It starred Michael Madsen. Yeah. So from from General Hospital to Vengeance Unlimited, how long? Oh, that had to be what six, seven years. Okay. Right, and you, I was bald in Vengeance on Living. Right, okay. Yeah. So when did you stop rocking the toupee and why? Uh, okay, so uh, mm, I'm going to give you two of the three reasons that okay, I got please. rid of it. One was financially. 
Okay, because it was a maintenance thing. It was a maintenance thing. You had to go in once a month. You had to put, add more hair to your piece. And you're you putting your and every you time you lived in it. You lived it. You slept in it. You showered in it. You worked out in it. You got in the ocean water with it, and it stayed. And the way they connected it was like with your hair pulled through the, the like the netting. Yeah. So as your hair grew, the looser it got. And they're like, oh, don't worry about that. You never ever see anybody scratch the top of their head. Yeah, their the whole, whole head yeah, moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that. So it would snap loose every once in a while, and it'd flat back. Oh man! So, so it would flat back, Darren. like in the ocean. Yeah, right? yeah. Right? So I wouldn't. Yeah, go going ahead. On. No, I'm going on. No, no, no. I no. I'm, 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 I'm just <laughs> dreading that. I just. <laughs> you thought about doing it? No, I don't want to do it. I can't do it. <laughs> Cast director goes, Clint. I think you would work more if you got something on top. Oh. Really? Yeah, and that kind of bummed me out because That's... it was a casting director that I knew for a long time, and that really, I guess that kind of hurt my feelings a little yeah. bit that she was telling me I needed to get a toupee. Yeah. But anyway, but that's the only time I ever really bothered oh. me. Okay, so that's one of the reasons. What's the other second reason well, why well, you got it? Well, it was because every time I walked into a room and if somebody even casually glanced up at my hair, <laughs> I'm like, do they know it's fake? Do they, yeah. know, it's, do they know this is a wig? You know, and, and like it just... To, as an actor, you have to feel you have to feel so authentic and so vulnerable. I mean, you have to be you have to be so relaxed. And I was never relaxed. Yeah, man. I was always worried that you were going to find out that I was fake. Yeah, I worry yeah. about that still. Yeah, they know I'm just really. This is all just a. Well, that's why I started this interview. That's how I feel my whole 32 years. Okay, Darren, enough. We need, this is not called toupee talk, okay? okay? Okay, So we're gonna move on. But I do I do appreciate you telling me all that. I was 26 when I took it off. You took it off, you said no more, and no you more. never regretted it. Never, I never regret it. Because we all know people who have toupees on TV. That guy's a toupee, that guy's a toupee. My that dad knows, that my dad knows. Clint, that guy's a toupee. I'm oh, like, totally. what? And like, oh yeah, it is a toupee. Totally, totally. So, Anyway, you start, let's talk about real work. When do you really start working, and what and why and why did you really start working? What was it? Am I still working? Yeah, you are. You got a great IMDb. You got a great IMDb. That's funny, man. Uh, I don't know if you ever really feel like you're really in it. Hey, man. I feel like you're always like you're so constantly looking for the next job after you did the. You driving home from set, you're like, okay, where, when am I gonna work again? Yep, yep, yep. You know what I mean? While you're on the set, you feel like a million bucks. Oh, like a million. You're not they thinking. treat you like a million bucks. You know, uh, they, they they love you, Mr. Culp. Would you mind coming over here? Would, would, would you like me to bring you breakfast? I mean, they treat you like a king. And then, as soon as you sign out, as soon as you sign out, all right, get him on the bus, get him out of here. <laughs> and then on that drive home, you start thinking, yeah, man, am I gonna work again? Am man, I, man. I, I messed up like seven wow. times on that take. Man, I wonder I, if they're gonna tell the casting uh, director. I wonder if I'm gonna make the final cut. <laughs> it's all downhill from <laughs> it's there. Down. <laughs> it's, 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 it really <laughs> is. Oh man, a sled just <laughs> on the ice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, you have no idea how bad it is to be an actor. Oh my gosh. And how even, great. even, yeah, it's and bad that's and just great. It. And, it's everything. But that, that's the reason why we keep doing it because it's so great oh, when you get it. Oh man, in the moment when you're there and you're like working with Jimmy Smith or whoever you're yes. working with, it's like it's the greatest thing ever. Okay, tell me, you start, you book, you book Vengeance Unlimited. I'm going to start there because that's a good place to start. Okay. Do you have any Michael Matson stories? Michael Did you Madsen? work with him? Yeah, I worked with him. Um, he, you know, he was a lot of fun. I actually liked him a lot. I thought he was a, he was, he was genuinely there. He was having a good time. Um, he was goofing off. We, we were, I, I'm, I'm playing a cop. Oh, he did do one thing. <laughs> I forgot all about this. So I play a cop busting into a hotel room looking for some, looking for a bad guy, right? And he's, well, it's him. I'm looking for him. And he's hiding. Well, the, the female lead pops her head out of the shower. And I'm like, oh my, I'm so sorry. You know, I get all like flustered and I, let, and I put my gun away. I'm like, sorry, ma'am. Well, in the first take, it's him that pops his head out. <laughs> He's busting. <laughs> and I go, ah! <laughs> okay, funny. all right, let me tell you my quick Michael Matson story. Okay. Not this is about me, I'm sorry, but this is, this is one of the things that has always stuck out to me filming that. Mm. Michael, in, in the scene, I'm giving Michael Matson like $700. Okay, and they, gig, they actually give me like $700 to give to him. Wow. So I give it to him on the take, and then between takes, he takes a couple of the hundred dollars <laughs> and he puts it in his pocket. Right. I'm like, oh God, what am I going to do? I'm not going to say that Michael Madsen took the money, but I'm worried because this is real money. Yeah. And I'm responsible yeah. for that money because the guy goes, all right, Clint, this is $700, so I know. <laughs> 
And then, so I come, the scene is over with, and I'm giving the guy the money, and I go, he goes, don't worry, I saw it. Oh, good. But I was so relieved because I didn't want anybody to think that I stole money. No, is that I'm not first? saying, but, and then Michael Madsen laughed it off and gave yeah, the money yeah, back. Yeah. He wasn't trying to steal oh, it. He was, he was messing with me yeah, totally. to put me in an awkward situation. Yeah. And they all laughed and had a good time. Yeah. Anyway, enough about that. Is that your first gig, by the way? That was like my that was like my second or third gig. Yeah, I Knott's was, Landing was my first gig. Knott's Landing. Knott's Landing. Great. Yeah. No, I, I that wasn't my first gig either. My first gig was Jag. Okay, now Jag. Jag is something else because Jag is is what the spinoff to NCIS, NCIS LA. Right. So NCIS, all those came from Jag. Yeah. Yeah. So that the, that creator is just still loving it because Belisario is making a ton of money. Ton of money. Yes, he is. How many false starts have you had in this business? How many times, because it's hard to interview people like you with 90 something credits. And like that many? Yeah, did you not know that? I thought it was like 60. So, when did you, okay, wait, before I said how many false starts, when did you start getting rolling? When did you start like, all right, you know what, I'm working, even though you don't think you're gonna work again, but right. you kept working. It was pretty, it was like 97, it was right around that time, I think, or was that 98? I think it, it was, was 97, 98. 98. Yeah, um, I had done, I think I did Angel, which was uh, uh, the, Dave the Buffy, Boreanaz's. The Buffy spinoff. Yeah, yeah, the Buffy spinoff. So with Dave Boreanaz, and I think it was that, and it was, um, oh my gosh, yeah, so it was, I did X-Files, Jag. I did, there was a whole, there was a whole slew of things started to happen. And then, um, what happened first? Was it the dot-com bust or something okay, like yeah, that? Okay, yeah, right? there's so many So things. there's like three major things that happened that just derailed my, 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 my movement. Mm -hmm. And I would have to start literally all over again right from like the, the beginning you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. there was a commercial strike in there yep you know 9 11 9 11 yeah there was the 08 recession i mean there was there's a lot of four there are four things that nailed me that i had to start back over again it's amazing how many things i guess everything slows everybody down but a lot of things slow hollywood down and you oh, would yeah. you wouldn't think there would be but there is things that slow it down yeah absolutely I, even even political uh, changes sometimes yeah, can yep, slow it down or exactly at least throw a hiccup in there yes yeah What's the biggest thing? What was the thing? What was the feather in your cap? What was the first feather in your cap that you go, wow, I just booked the biggest part of my life? Was it, I saw you did Star Trek? Oh, yeah. That's a funny story, actually, to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let me hear it. Let me see. It was the second job I, I had. The first job was a uh, one line on Jag. What was the one line? Uh, I don't remember. Okay, go ahead, Star Trek. Uh, the Star Trek came up, and I remember I had an audition for it. And see, I was bartending four nights a week at this point. And I think my audition was like 10 o'clock in the morning. And it was straight to producers for some silly reason. I think they were desperate to hire a, a guy, right? Um, and I was blurry-eyed. I was so exhausted, man. And uh, I remember going in. I, I, the day before, I called my friend, who I knew was a Trekkie. I'm like... Hey, I'm going in to read for this this character. Uh, what is it, man? And he's like, well, what's it called? I go, Cardassian. He goes, oh my gosh, it's the greatest part ever. <laughs> uh, you're gonna like this military guy. You know, he's like going nuts. And I'm like, oh, awesome, awesome, okay. And then that's all I really took into the room. And you know, I was so relaxed because I was so like exhausted. Yeah. They loved me and gave really? me the part. And it was, was this like, at Paramount Studios? Paramount Studios. I auditioned for that. I don't know about that part, but go ahead. Yeah, and it was just, it was really, so when I got it, I'm like, oh, this is cool, you know? Yeah. It's cool. But I didn't realize it was gonna be what it is. I'm getting weird, like, I've got a guy that sent me a picture. It was like a eight by 10 of himself from I don't know, Ohio or something, but right. it looked like a senior picture because he's in a tie and he, had, <laughs> and he had his hair. You know, I mean, yeah. a nice guy. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure he's a nice guy. Sure, sure. And, and, but he signed his name on it and stuff. I, uh, that came like last week. So. <laughs> but that's what I was going to ask. That's the reason why I brought up Star Trek because there's a Star Trek every time. I don't know if you guys know this, but whenever there's a big show, there's a uh, a, a Wikipedia type oh, of right. site yes. for each big show. Yes. So that'd be like Star Trekopedia. Yeah, something like that. Right. Yeah. And that's where all the fans can contact you, find out what exactly what part you're on, and they, they just give out all your information out to all these people. Yes. 
which is a really yes. fun thing. And then the lovely internet can actually knows your home address right. as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes my wife feel real comfortable. I bet, I bet. Okay, so Star Trek, what's the next, when, tell, me, tell me your first big false start in your career. And I'm not saying you haven't made it, but, but career, but actors like us are journeyman actors. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of false starts we think this is going to be it. Oh, oh, okay. Um, well, it's a lot of them. Yeah, there really is. <laughs> uh, I think one was uh, the social network. Social network, that was big. I thought my manager at the time wanted me to turn it down because it was only one scripted line. And the casting director was like, um, no, he promised, I promise you, he wants to be in this movie. And so, and I, I was gonna say yes anyway. Who was the know. director? That's a big director. David Fincher. Yes. And uh, and uh, I, you know, I thought, man, I'm gonna be in this movie, the things, the tides are gonna turn. The tides are gonna turn. <laughs> the tides are gonna turn. <laughs> the tides are, I'm <laughs> waiting. The tides are gonna turn. Yeah. Okay, really quick, side side note. David Fincher, because you had one line, I, I kind of would be happy with one line with David Fincher. Yes. Because did he have you do the scene over and over and oh, over and over? Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, it got to the point. Well, first of all, uh, the way I was trained, I, I, I like to have a full script, so I kind of can like, kind of understand maybe why my character's in the movie. Even though you have one line, you want to read the full I script. I want to read the whole script because you want to know what what you what's... want to know. I'm just like that one line. I've got the right, one line. Yes, yes, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> that's serious. That's, that's, the, that's me. That's me. Uh, yeah. Okay, so you. I want the script, man, and and uh, they wouldn't give it out because uh, Aaron Sorkin wrote it. You know, right. so it's really, really top secret. So I, I mean, what can I do? I'm playing a Facebook lawyer. It's like the very first lawyers that they get, you know, that, right. uh, that uh, the, uh, uh, Zuckerberg, yeah, Zuckerberg and those guys get. And uh, I'm like, well, what can I, I, I want to do some research. I want to build something. Well, I, I, I didn't build anything. <laughs> Thinking, well, it's one line, you know, I, I, I think I can get away with this. No, man. <laughs> oh, oh. One of the other lawyers was a good friend of mine. And I remember about take 14 He's, I, I just look over at him and I'm, I'm sweating bullets at this point. My heart's pumping, I'm not breathing. I hear this so many times, people working oh, with David Fincher. Oh man, and I look over at Peter and I'm like, Pete, man, I go, am I just totally sucking right now? Because I, 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 he's having me do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm whispering this, right? And I'm Mike, so I'm sure Fincher's sure, listening sure, to me Sure, sure, sure. Like, I totally suck, man. <laughs> it's like, you're doing fine, man. This is just how he works. And I was terrified. <laughs> I know, and so when I drove home, one of those situations, yeah, right. I'm driving home going, I have no business being in this business. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. I don't. I totally <laughs> suck. It was, a, it was pretty awful for a good couple of years after that. Yeah. It's amazing what that does to us, man. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of wincing going on on the way home for me and months later. Okay. Yeah. This is a crazy environment today on a Friday. I think we're okay. No, we're good. We're good. What's your next false start? Because you've done some nice, you've done some good stuff. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Uh, Monk. Monk. I did. A, I had a really great part on Monk where it was. Um, I like to ask this question first. Which Monk girl was it? Was it the old Monk girl or the new Monk? The new one, Trailer Howard, who okay. was a classmate of mine at the time. Uh, did she get you the audition? No. Okay. No, no. She acted like she didn't know who I was, but my guess Are is she didn't know who I was anyway. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no, she was pretty focused, actually. She was a focused, focused uh, student in class and actress on the set. Um, but uh, but it was a big, I mean, I'm in a, that, that's the one TV show that I'm in the entire episode from beginning to end. I'm like the, the it was a guest lead, actually, which I don't think I've had one since. But <laughs> that was 10 years ago. Sure. Uh, 11, maybe. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I thought, dude, this, this is it's going to be on Super Bowl Sunday because it was a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, it's one thing. of those things where it comes on after the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, and it was yes. about a football sure. thing. I play uh, a guy who yep. kills the quarterback, you know. And, uh, and I thought, man, this, and then what happens right after that? So that was fall of 08. Oh, man, what was going on in fall of 08? AIG, Lehman Brothers. That's right. The recession started. And then the only job I had after that was uh, the social network. One day, the next year, was the only day I worked. Really? Yeah, so that was a false start. What do you do when the phone's not ringing? You know what's great? 
is now that I, I, I have kids and a wife and a home, thank you, thank you God, um, that I I don't have a whole lot of time. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm hustling to look for the next buck. Anyway, Joe, you need help moving that refrigerator? I got a horrible back, but I'll help you for 50 bucks. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes. So I try not to think about it too much. And, and what I'll do is I'll occasionally reach out to my manager or agent. Agents don't like to be reached out to so much. Manager does. Yeah. He's like, yeah, just just tell me, you know. So I'll, I'll send her an email saying, hey, uh, you know, what's going on out there? Seems a little, and and that's that's what I do. So, have you ever thought about quitting? Oh yes. But like, really thought about quitting? No. That's just it. We think about it a lot. Yeah. I say we. We. The royal we. But <laughs> I don't know if I could actually really do it. Quit. Well. But I see a lot of people quitting more now than ever oh before. Oh yeah, yeah. I tell you what, you hit your forties, and it's like it's like a light switch goes off, and like all the guys that you were tra trailing up with, or you know, hiking up the, the mountain with, they fall off. I know. A significant amount. People are moving away, and I'm moving like, moving away. Wait, I want. Where are, you, where are you going? I want to go. I want to, I want to go. But do you really want to no, go? No, that's just it. Yeah. I don't want to go. I don't. I mean, I, you know, I love this business. As much as I hate it, I love it so much, as we said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna, I love the city, too. The city's I love great. LA. Okay, let's talk about a cool project you're doing that you just shot. Ford and Ferrari. What yeah, is this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ford versus Ferrari it opens uh, November 15th. Tell me about that, dude. All right, so... Uh, okay, so here's a here's a here's an actor story for you. Um, I had I was up for uh, a David Fincher project called Mindhunter on on Netflix. Sure, and sure. And I was up for a good part. And was this season one or this, two? This, this that this season that just came out. Okay. And they, David. Well, the casting director who also cast me in Gone Girl and Social Network. She's been his guy. Uh, for, uh, I mean, he's she's been his girl casting. Yeah, yeah, I know who Since she is. Yeah, yeah, she's great. She's yeah. a southern girl. She's a, I love her. Yeah. Um, I kept getting the same. I kept getting new scenes. Why can't I think of her name? I know Lorraine. her name. Thank you, Lorraine. Yeah, Lorraine Mayfield. That's right, Lorraine Mayfield. And Lorraine. Um, anyway, so I'd get scenes. I'd get two or three scenes. I'd shoot them. You know, we had to self tape. Uh, self tape them. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Self tape them. Sent them off. I got a call from my agent going. Uh, they they really like you. Um, Lorraine says, give her a call if you feel like it, but we want you to redo that, those scenes, and, and here's four more. <laughs> Wait, Lorraine says, they said call Lorraine if you want to? Yeah. Why? What, what, I don't understand that part. If you have any questions. Okay, okay, got it. Go so ahead. I called her up. She's in the car driving to New Mexico, and I'm like, hey, Lorraine. She goes, hey, sweetie. And I said, uh, so just wondering, you know, what, 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 she goes, listen, Darren, your audition was great. David just wants to see more. Which means be prepared. Right. Take after take after take after take. You know and I mean? is, his, is this happening because he remembers you from Social Network? What, the, yeah. Of that crappy job you did. Well, no. He, so he, <laughs> I'm kidding. He, yeah, no, no. So when I, when he hired me five years later, four, six, six years later for the Dawn Girl, it was like I was the greatest. He hugged me, and I wet myself. Because for those five years, you thought you did a uh, bad totally, job. Totally, that's the, that's That happens so many times in this business. Yeah. We leave a set thinking we did bad. <laughs> five years later, we found out, no, we I loved you, dude. He loved me. I mean, he hugged me. I, I, you know, I was like, I started, I almost started crying. You know? Yeah. No, not really. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. He okay. likes me. He really likes me. Um, anyway, so, so I was up for Mindhunter. Kept getting all these scenes, all these scenes, all these scenes. Months are passing. Nope, still in the still in the running, still in the running, still in the running. And then I made the the the, the, the crucial mistake. I uh -oh. got my hopes up. Of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the day that I found out that I did not get Mindhunter was the very same day. Half hour later, it caught, the phone rings and I got Ford versus Ferrari, which is directed by James Mangold, who's phenomenal right what did he direct he's he directed some big things well, give me, did, uh, give me a did, couple uh, things well the most recent ones i think were logan uh wolverine yes, he did yes, walk the yes, line yes, the johnny cash yes, movie yes, he did yes. uh 310 to yuma yep uh, phenomenal right okay, right phenomenal director so i was like yeah but it's only one scene you know and are like, you really saying all, are you really saying it's I'm only one myself. scene yeah, in, in my mind i'm at the i got the gym i i was in the gym when the phone rang that didn't get 
Mindhunter, and it took all the gas out of me. And I went, I went into a, I kid you not, I don't know if I've ever gone as dark as I went on this. I went into a tunnel. Like it, it darkened around. I've been, I've you know been, on Instagram when you can hit that like uh, vignette? Yes, yes, yes. It went as dark as you could go. I know exactly, yes. Right? Yes. And I'm like, uh, and I just remember sitting on the bench, and I think I kind of walked through a couple different uh, exercises, and then the phone rang again, they said, oh, but the good news is, is you got Ford versus Ferrari. And I'm like, and it was that, it was that. It was like, oh, great. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, man. But hey. then, the awesome thing about it was, is that when I went to the fitting, the wardrobe gal was like, oh, I did my hunt this season one. She's but, and I was relaying my, 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 my sob story. And she says, but do you know Jim? Meaning James Mangold? I go, no. She goes, oh, well, David already knows you. Jim's a great guy to know. And I fell in love with James Mangold. Really? Oh, man, I'm telling you, man. He he gave me the biggest bear hug after we shot our scene. And, and uh, it was a week. After a week, it was fantastic. On a side note, you said something. You were at the gym when you heard the bad news. Do you know different parts of this city where you found out bad news and good news? No. Like, I think of this Whole Foods. I was at this Whole Foods a year and a half ago when I booked a part. No. Like, I'll drive by that Whole Foods and go, oh, I remember that. Ah. I booked a part there. <laughs> and like, you're there I, every day yeah, now? well, I'm there <laughs> every day waiting for my phone to go off. Okay, it went off a long time ago. I hope it goes off now. Okay, really quick, Darren. Let me see what we got here. I'm going to flip this up. Okay. Darren, when you get a script, okay? Yeah. Yeah. When you get a script, tell me it's a, it, let's say it's a, let's say it's four pages. How do you break it down? Give me a quick acting tip on how you get practice a scene for an audition. Oh, wow. Well, I have, um, if I have time, which I try my best to have all the time I can. But let's just say a day. Let's just say you get an audition at five o'clock tonight for tomorrow at, right. two, at two o'clock. Tell I, me what you do. I basically, uh, I break it all down to what's the event literally and figuratively what's the events happening here you know whether it's uh you know i won't get into that but that, so literally what is happening and figuratively what is happening the event okay do you have a pen and paper with oh you yeah at all? no i flip the pages over and i just write on the back so i i I'll, I'll fill up the like as many pages as i need usually i can pull it off in one so i do the event what do i want and what do i need and they're never the same thing who taught you this method larry moss Okay. Wow. Okay. Larry okay. Moss is, uh, is my, 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 my man. Sure, man. Uh, I studied with is he the room. intent? Uh, yeah, intent to live. Okay, it's I love him. Book. I'm just making sure. I have it. I love yeah, it. Yeah. I love it. I had him from I, Tuesdays and Thursday nights for four years. Every, I never missed. And we went from 93 to 97. And I was, I, I, it, I, that was, the, it was like my master's degree. I mean, I was there. I gave it everything I had. And wasn't even really paying attention to auditions. I was like, I, it was about because there was so much expected of us. Yeah. Because you read that book. I read the book, I underlined a lot of stuff yeah. in that book and I keep going back to it. Yeah. But let me tell you the type of actor I am and I'm not done with what we're talking about. I ordered the disc, you know, he came out with a DVD. Mm. The, the process, right? The process. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't gotten it. Well, I got it about a year ago, and it's still in its package. Okay. That's what kind of actor I am. Okay, go ahead. Go well, you're ahead. a busy guy. Well, I'm a, yeah, that's it. Okay, you write <laughs> down all these notes on the back. Yeah, you write so the I, reason why. T tell me again. Yeah, yeah. Quick. So it's the what's the event? What do I want? What do I need? What do you want from this person? Yeah. What's what's uh, yeah exactly? What's the conflict? What's at stake? Um, and then I go back down to my prior circumstances, and I'll write out what has led up to this moment, right? Right. What's my emotional line? Now, this is what I learned from Karen West. Karen West is great, too. Okay. Uh, the audition technique. So that, so large part of it was Larry, and then hers I use as support. Okay. Uh, so prior circumstances, what's the emotional line? Um, again, what do I want? What do I need? I clarified it even more. And then uh, what time is it? Like the importance of the time? In the moment, what is just, you know, if something's happened, if it's somebody's birthday, place, how does place affect me? It's all like, and that's that's the Larry stuff too. It all, how is everything affecting me? The time schedule, the place, what's the opposite? Like if I can throw an opposite in there, instead of like playing the actual, what it seems like it might okay, be. Okay, all right. The, you know? Wow, that's a good one. And then uh, I, write the, I write the character descriptions down. Like, okay, so what is it that they're looking for? At least what I can, derived from what they've said, right? 
And then uh, last thing was, uh, then I do a uh, what's my song and dance, you know? What do you mean what's your song and dance? What am I doing in the moment, you know? Before I even start talking, what am I doing? Am I checking my phone, you know? What's I got gotcha. you, know I got gotcha. you. Okay, how are you memorizing your lines? Is it because you know all of that that just helps you memorize your lines, or are you saying them every? Are you saying them over and over? Or are you writing them down? How do you memorize? So it? then I just, uh, I do it like doing a play. I'll go one line. That's the other person's line. Okay, do I know what my third line or do my second line is after what he says? You know. And, uh, so then I do it like one line at a time. That back up, start at the top, go as far as I can. Learn a little more, go to the top, take it all the way through, so I can, and then I record it. You do? With the, uh, with the, the other, app? The other, no, I have a little digital recorder. Okay, okay. And I take that with me everywhere. Really? Yeah, man. So it just has the other person's lines on it. Okay, okay. Do you know the other person's lines? No, usually the cue. Like, what's the what what's the gist of it? I don't have them down exactly, okay. but I, what are they asking me? It's kind of what I, all right. what I know for sure. Any other acting tips before we leave the acting tip part? Um, just be authentic, you know. Try to be, try to, try to, try to say it, live it, be it as 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 truthful as you possibly can. What's the worst day in Hollywood for you besides that ride home from um, Social Network? No that, calls at all. No calls Nothing at all. Nothing to work on, like no auditions to work on, no audition to go to, nothing in the hopper, nothing that I have forward, uh, looking forward to to work on. That's a bad day. I always tell my wife one day I'm going to write a book, this, and the book is called titled, You Have No New Messages. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that it? Yeah. I mean, how often are you checking your email? Yeah. yeah nothing. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Sears. What? Yeah. <laughs> Sears coupon. What? I don't it. even shop at Sears. Uh, how'd they know that? <laughs> Best day in Hollywood. Best day in Hollywood. Uh, Best day or best time? I think, you know, right in the middle of the day when you're working with Matt Damon or, or Jimmy Schmidt or Alec Baldwin or just that day. It's like, okay, well, oh, uh, okay, we're good. What's the what's the terminology? Uh, uh, we're gonna do another setup. Okay, new deal, same thing. You know what I mean? Same thing. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's a great day. Yeah, that is a great day. That is a great day. Uh, or you know what? Can I tell you what part I like on a set? Moving on, meaning we got that scene. Yeah. And it's time. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And like that was your hardest part. And like, okay, moving on. Right. I right. love that. Like part. if you have a giant chunk of uh, yes. dialogue yes. that you got to spit yes. out. Yes. Yes. And they get it and they're happy with it. Woo! <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, okay. That's true. <laughs> I had one of those recently. Yeah. Really? Yeah. On what? The resident. It was a lot of doctor speak. Okay. Pheno neural trauma. Blah 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 blah. And it's like, oh. Let's man. talk about the resident really quick. We're gonna start winding down here. Okay. Resident, you had a nice. That was a nice thing for you, right? Yeah, it was. Do you do local hires out of Atlanta? I do not do local. I do modified local, so they give me a hotel. Is that what that's called now? Modified local? Yeah, because local, local, you're on your own for everything. Okay, modified local means they pay for your hotel, but they're not paying airfare. No. Do you fly in for callbacks? Have you ever done that? Or do you try to hope that they just book you off uh, tape? Well, I learned my lesson. I flew in for a... Well, it's funny, because I've, I've flown in twice for callbacks. First one I got, second one I didn't. Okay. So 50-50. So I, I, I would be very wary to do that again. But this was a situation where it was a substantial part in a substantial movie. Yeah. So that's why I did it. Okay. If it was for like a day or a couple scenes, I, I probably wouldn't. Because it's just too expensive from LA to fly there. And, you know. How many different agents do you have across the United States of America? 14. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Am I giving away secrets right now by asking these questions about mm, uh, maybe maybe the maybe the maybe the the, the 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 modified and all that stuff is that is that a secret well no that part's not a secret but a lot of actors don't like talking about their agents in different cities oh i see uh my They're agents very... are all cool with the, the agents i have in different cities because they don't the truth is is listen all that stuff is going on in the southeast and the east coast uh they're grabbing those people from New York anyway, because the smaller it's all smaller parts. It's all it's they don't really hire the substantial roles. If 
you were a local hire down there. All right. The guys, you know, and not 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 to put it down, it's, you know, you might have a couple of scenes, but they will not see like a major regular or a, a major recurring. They they just they might they might audition you, but I don't I, I don't know how seriously they look at you. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Darren, aren't we blessed that we because we have families yes. out here. And Amen. we do have downtime. As 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 one would look, man, we have too much downtime. But our, but yet our downtime is we could drive our kids to the sporting events. Yeah. You you I'm going to say this really quick. You have some uh, great kids doing some sports right now, right? Yes, I do. Two boys, two boys playing football right now. And you're loving that. I'm having the time of my life. See, thank God. And and you're able to go check them out, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you got some time. On yeah. Your hands. Well, I so tell this you business, that. it's yeah. it's crazy. It's a all right. Yeah, no, to go along with that, it, it's it's one of the greatest things about being an actor. Is like, you know what? I don't have to ask off to go over. I don't have to like, you know, bail on my real estate client over here or to go to my son's game. I'm, nothing's nothing needs me today. Right. You know. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is. I, I do love that part. Who? This is my new question. I'm gonna start asking people. Who should I interview next? Who should you interview next? Um. Man, there's a I got a lot of a lot of a lot of friends. That but somebody would love to do with this. an interesting story. Look at this dog. Yeah, <laughs> he's got sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Only in LA. Yeah. Um, I think. Oh wow. Uh, if you don't want, if he can't. That's Colin fine. Douglas, do you know Colin? Yeah, no, we he and I have talked about doing this. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's he's a worker. He's, 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 he's a, worker. a worker. Yeah. Um. You know who else? We don't have to go through a whole list. I was just seeing if you, there's somebody like, dude, you should interview this guy. Right, right. Well. Anyway, it's I, not as I, I, I'm, I'm struggling here. It's okay. Darren, anything Let me else? Let my phone. No, 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 Darren. Anything else I need to know about you before we close shop? Yes. Let not me about it. me. It was something I wanted to add to what you were saying about having a family and all that. Okay. I think the most significant thing that Larry Moss taught me and I preach it to everybody and anybody that wants to be an actor. Get a life, and then you'll have a career. Amen. If to you that. think this is, if you think landing a show is going to change your life, and he goes, you're wrong. Man, it's, getting a life just it just adds to it. And by living a life, you're not constantly thinking, is the phone ringing? Is the phone ringing? Let me yeah, check the email. Let me check the email. Yeah, oh gosh, that's it's a that's a for me that's that would be a horrible way to live. Yeah, uh, like looking and waiting. Because, uh, you know, no, I, 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 I am all about, like, you know, going yeah. to my son's games and what's my wife need yep, and, yep. you know, all that stuff. Okay, Darren, I'm going to close it down. Here's the deal. I am impressed with you and your acting. Thank you. So just know that. Thanks. I wanted you on here because I'm like, that's the kind of guy I want to interview right there. So hat off to you, brother. Okay, Darren, I got one last favor. Yep. Will you tell everybody out there goodbye? Take care, you guys. Thanks for listening.